Look what the tide brought to him. Harry, you're bleeding all over the place. You're half dead. Whatever this is, it is completely unimportant compared to what you've just seen. This is the man with sunglasses from the whirling in rags. But where are his sunglasses? That's right. And you're bleeding. I'm bothered by it. Harry, you look like you need a fucking organ transplant. Oh, fuck it. Let's not get into that. We're not forgetting about anything. Look at you. Hello, I'm Trent Heilerstrom. I believe we've met on several occasions. I'm your goddamn partner, Jean Vicumar, and this is your special task force. Or what's left of it. Special Consultant Trent Heidelstam, Battle Officer Judith Minot. Hi. We've come to scrape what's left of you off the pavement. Lieutenant Kim Kisoragi, Prison 57. We've just come from the island where our investigation led us. The scene is making even him feel as though he has to justify your actions. We might need your help with something later. As if he recalled that he's in fact a decorated police lieutenant and not a naughty boy. But this is clearly a departmental matter, so I'm going to leave you to discuss it among yourselves. It's good to meet you, Lieutenant Kitsuhagi. Letting the lieutenant know he shouldn't feel embarrassed over the shitstorm that's about to befall you. Ari, we want to help you. Trant, I believe this is where you come in? This is the horse-faced woman. I don't know why you named her that, but it was beyond idiotic. You should never address her using those words again. Um, I don't quite know what I'm doing here. I was asked to participate as an expert. I think I need to manage your expectations a little. I'm at best an enthusiast in cognitive science. My background is in something else entirely. I engage in neurology on a merely theoretical level. In fact, I should probably get going. No, Trant, it's too late. You're part of this shit now. What have you got to say for yourself, shit kid? What does he have to say for himself? He left you to catch the bullets. Shit kid, what an interest in Monica. You, shit kid, that's you. Despite all that you've done, the deserter, the phasmid, the case? No, because of all that you've done. The cafeteria manager you fucked over told us where you went. Speaking of which, the giant hierografito in front of the building. The one that's burning. Did you do that? I knew it. Didn't I tell you, Trant? I told you it was a shit kid. The line is from Lu Jiatun's Mirova 82, isn't it? About girl child communism, the titular returning character to ghost the apparition of. Good choice, Harry. He is correct. It was the Seraiese poet Lu Jiatun who, in the 50s of the last century, composed her. Don't encourage him, Trant. Okay. Guilty as charged. I heard you'd lost your mind and your memory. I wanted to see if it was true. And it was. Good work, Harry. You're insane now. There's one less person for me and everyone else to rely on. He was too sarcastic for you to realize who he was. Did you? Or did you literally not recognize my face? We've been partners for how long, Harry? Don't answer that. You don't remember. Absolutely no idea. A hundred years? Judging by the familiarity you feel toward him, two years minimum? Or maybe a short but close stint on the task force. He's right. Don't start guessing. Now's not a good time. It's okay. I didn't come here to gloat or to fool you. Neither did he, actually. We're just worried. That's right. Worried. I'm always worried about you. Every time you don't show up to work, or when you do about... Stink. You're a worry fest. She's worried about you. I'm worried about you. Even Special Consultant Backpedal is worried about you. Everyone worries. Instead of working. He's got a very, very solid case there. Actually, I've been trying to find a good moment to tell you. Yes, you often sound like a brutal idiot. Yes, I'm Tran Heilerstein. I never said I wasn't Tran Heilerstein. 
Mikael? Mikael is my son. His son? What a joke. Everyone is lying to you. No, I was just interested in the Feld building and the Martinez beachhead. And Mikael wanted to see Martinez. It was a coincidence. Him being there with his son, it was not a coincidence. It's difficult to see, but he was worried about you. And also interested in the Feld building. What indeed? I was asked to share my take on some of the more obscure theories developed in Königstein in the 30s. Like partial psychotraumatic amnesia, group personality theory... He's here to see if you're insane. He is smart. Let's move on. Duped. Hey, here's a brilliant idea. Don't be a morbid drunk and you won't be duped so easily. Yes, I'm still Kinki Solagi, still a lieutenant from Prison 57. Still caught up in this crossfire, too. Yeah, Major Crimes Unit, under Lieutenant Dubois and Vicamar. Ring any bells? Refresh your memory? It's a goddamn Major Crimes Unit. There's you, me, Jude, drunk fucking Heidelstown, and Guillaume Baby. I'm technically just a civilian advisor. Oh, fuck you. You're part of this shit show. Oh, that's an interesting story, actually. Guillaume Bevy is a police reporter who joined our team. He was really good. Then he left because he lost faith in your ability to lead the unit. Other people have left too. Good, smart people. People we won't get back. Only me and this really patient patrol officer are still here. And Tron because I'm forcing him to stay. Is this Guillaume Bevy blonde and partial to sunglasses? See? There. He's getting it. I was impersonating him. Look at me, I'm Jibevi. It was going to be funny, but then you really did have brain damage, so not so much anymore. He sincerely thought it was going to be amusing for both of you. Do. It's a major crimes unit. We clear the desk of cases so Precinct 41 doesn't look like the worst station in town. We are shit here now, Harry, because of you. They're your pussy, or what remains of it. Hand-picked. Hand-lost. The 41st isn't... God damn it, Harry. You told us to fuck off. You said we're cramping your style. Your detective god. Fuck everything. All we burn. Detect or die. It wasn't like that. Fuck you, Harry. We didn't know there was gonna be a tribunal, did we? Oh, you think it was cool you saying that? Aesthetic somehow? You were crying when we got here, breaking things. You said we were going into the abyss. None of us wanted to see the abyss, so we fucked off. <sighs> like you told us to. The bells aren't ringing because you have brain damage. Trant, this is where you come in. How bad is it? Well, he doesn't have visible tremors, he talks without slurring, he can drive a boat, he's standing, reasoning. All good signs, but... Complete retrograde amnesia, episodic and semantic. Meaning, you forgot both who you are and the definitions of money, Isola, Pearl, and so on. As displayed in a station call, our interactions with him and... I don't want to be a snitch, but also mine with him before when Harry did not seem to know who I was. It's all very interesting. Interesting? Yes, interesting. I have my theories, but I would like to hear Harry's thoughts first. Harry, what do you think happened to you? Neurologically, psychologically, and why not socioeconomically? Not when you phrase it like that, but I don't think critical theory. I know everyone thinks this is far-fetched pink academia, but still, I don't think it should be off the table here. What? He lost his memory because of capitalism? No, not like that. I'm not talking for Hedefort's cool here. But Harry, I asked you, what do you think happened? Look at half Boohoo here, victim of the ethanol industrial complex. What are you, an Inva communist now? You think this is a joke? Asking him was a mistake. He's a teenage psycho. I ask you. It's not possible to wipe your own memory with alcohol alone, right? He's either lying or insane. But Detective Vigmer... He has blanked out before. Yes, a couple of times. 
after some of the more serious benders. One was after the two drunks case, the other when we looked into that mural. So you don't remember not remembering. Beautiful. The two cases in your ledger. The unsolvable case and the next world mural. Those were recent. Those cases were hard on you. Interesting. So at first he dipped his toes into it, prepared. That's where he would have gotten the idea, yes. Practice. And then he used alcohol to get there, so to speak. What do you mean? Well, here's my theory. What if this is an absolutely normal reaction to the world we're living in? What if this is not a significant anomaly at all? Something to be explained, approached as a defect. Look at the sensory input here. Look at the ruins, the neon, listen to the radio, the multitudes, the people. Live here for 40 years. As a police detective, he's like a magnetic reader on the world team, to borrow a known metaphor. Harry's been pushed flat against it. Total input. Hardwired to the free market. He just needed for its end. Okay, Trump, thank you. That's absolutely meaningless. I'm glad we brought you. Will he or will he not be able to work in the major crimes unit? Is he a cretin now? I want to know that. He's not a cretin, and he is able to do work. If not in his previous leadership role, then as a line detective. Leadership? Now? No one even mentioned that. I misphrased my question. It should have been, is he able to put his clothes on and use the body? Or do we need to get him on a disability pension? They can keep that pension. You're rock solid. You can put your clothes on hard. Now nothing. Now we're just going to stand here. Yeah, yeah. Just stand there. It's cool. No. Now we discuss that. What the fuck did you do to a motor carriage? Why is it there, Harry? Lie. Just bide your time. Ask something. Then lie. Yes. In the ocean, under the sea. Our work vehicle, with fishing clams and other sea shit. Ha ha ha. Ho ho ho. Underwater killer. So funny, Harry. Thank you for fucking me. Thank you for destroying 45,000 real of police property that's coming out of my pay slip. You know that, right? You're gonna get fired. And I'm gonna pay till I die. It doesn't matter. <sighs> Your badge, Harry. Show me your badge. The thing that tells people you're a police officer. We're not armor cops. We're cop cops. People don't know us by our armor. They know us by our badges. You called in and said you lost yours. Have you found it? In a rush to demonstrate your badge, your eager fingers can't sustain a grip on the smooth plastic, and the badge slips out of your hand. Not today, Badge. You got it all right. You're showing it to him, victorious. They're seeing the badge. And your gun? As if having your badge and gun are natural states, not achievements. What is it with all these material objects? Here we go again. Lost gun, lost gun, trying to terrorize you. You lost your fucking gun? I knew it. I knew he lost it. Didn't I tell you? I told you he lost his gun too. You may have accidentally admitted to losing it just now. This isn't cause for celebration. It's bad. I would say it's very bad, yes. You lost your service weapon while drunk. And then you couldn't find it because you were still drunk? You're drunk right now, aren't you? We're not talking about the fucking gun anymore. We're talking about the vaporized cloud of ethanol coming from your mouth. This is so unfair. He knows you have the gun and still he's punishing you. You were never supposed to lose it in the first place. Not lost is your gun's natural state, you drunk bum. A little drink. You smell like a corpse. I'm downwind and I can barely breathe. You smell like shit. You let a suspect escape, Harry. Class year is something. Because you were too drunk to assess a flight risk. We've read the reports. Lieutenant Kitsuhagis. We know. 
Oh well, if she was nice. I'm not even gonna get into the other suspect, who also escaped. Yeah, Ruby something. Or the fact that you're Evra Claire's little peony now, doing I don't know what for him. That's small time stuff, that's nothing, that's a humorous anecdote. Compared to the six people who were gunned down, the streets are literally red with blood, Harry. It was fucking mass murder. He did everything he could. We did everything we could. The company hired and vetted mercenaries. Lieutenant Dubois got between them and the locals. Here comes the cavalry. He did so at considerable risk to his person. Remember, he was shot. We stopped an execution, not a negotiation. The loss of life was minimal compared to what it could have been. Detective, it's better if I do that. It's so much better if he does this. A million times better. Thank you for the input, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. I didn't mean to suggest you didn't handle the situation. <clears throat> he thinks of apologizing, but decides against it. You've spent the week with him on this case. What is your take? On um, the case? On Lieutenant Yefretor Dubois. Well, the drinking, the last gun, also losing his badge, that's all true. And he's been drinking on the job. The man sighs deeply. Then there's the self-flagellation issue. He likes to apologize profusely, making it sound like he's guilty of at least first-degree murder. It's not a good communication strategy for an officer. It's... it's worrying. Especially considering his political views. Detective Dubois is, as you may know, a Mazovian socio-economist. He's even gotten involved in a highly theoretical underground reading group, which, again, for a police officer, is unusual. You should yell something. The RCM consists of policemen of the state that is, so a little discrepancy there. And then there's the motor carriage in the sea, something I was not present for. But despite all this, he is a great detective, one of the best I have seen, in fact. He can talk human beings into telling him everything. And he doesn't stop. In all the time I've spent with him, he has not once stopped pursuing leads, however far-fetched and tangential. He is tireless, madly driven. Well, except that one time when he stopped to sing karaoke, which, by the way, I have to disagree with you, Mr. Vikmar, was a valiant effort. He really sang his heart on. Okay, he did something. Other than that one time, he has tirelessly worked on the case, and he solved it. We have a confession, a murder weapon, and the perpetrator, locked on the island right now, awaiting transportation. He apprehended a revolutionary brigade who stayed hidden for 50 years, ever since the revolution, who's probably committed other murders over those years. Oh, and he also discovered a new species. A new species? A colossal stick insect. It was on the island, camouflaged as the reeds. It uh, unfolded from the reeds. I think we may be dealing with the insulindian phasmid. He takes out the photo of the phasmid and shows it to the officers across the yard. The wind blows, flapping the glossy rectangle in his hand. You hear gasps beneath the howling of the wind. As you can see, it's about three meters tall. In fact, we think it may be the largest land invertebrate ever discovered. Fucking hell. Is that... Is this somehow connected to the case? Detective? Yes, but also... The old man was not aware of the phasmid's presence. Exhibiting a strange, atypical dementia, he fell into a stupor after its appearance. He became near catatonic. So, it is connected. I must say, this is absolutely extraordinary. It's... I don't even have words for it. Yes, it really does make it hard to fire the drunk. This is a very, very sad man who has just seen something that's made him forget his sadness. Now you make your case. Now is the time. Now or never. Female? What makes you think so? You had to see it. 
it had the subdued colors of a female. And the nesting behavior too, I think. Incredible. Were there eggs in the nest? Not as far as I could see. There were other things there, though. It's interesting time. Forget about the rest. Actually, you know, this would indicate it was a male. This is far from anything in my field, but I think such nests are called bowers. They are for attracting males. Bowers are built by males of the species who can't afford colorful mating displays physically. This one was plain colored. Of course, as I said, I'm only guessing. I didn't see it. It must be robust if it can move a whole helmet with its limbs. It could maybe roll it, like a dung beetle. As in cloning itself? <laughs> what makes you think so? Mm-hmm. Then it wouldn't matter if it's male or female. The bower would just be rudimentary behavior from before the pathogenetic mutation. That makes sense, yes. Very interesting. Such organisms are extremely vulnerable to disease. A single strain of bacteria could wipe out the whole species. We're probably looking at conservation efforts here. In his mind, he's already planning a nature reserve and knows a good guy for that. Hmm, yes. That would be a chiromone, a pheromone that's seemingly beneficial to the host. It usually stimulates the affected nervous system. Not a human's, of course, but perhaps a predator's? There are species of bees that under the influence of chiromones take wasp larvae to their hives. Ants do the same with aphids, thinking they're... Do you think this is how it stayed hidden? Nothing is off the table. But I, I want to stress this. The find does not have to be connected to the case. The case is 100% prosecutable, without any chiromones. Of course, Lieutenant. Of course. We should treat the case and the FASMID as completely separate from each other. People are not going to... They're not going to go for this speculation in the constabulatory. Yes, but also red colored, beige and brown, a little green on the outside. After unfolding from a single stalk, it still retained parts that looked like reed tufts on its limbs. Incredible. The PR value of this is exceptional. Carp discovers new species. Maybe even discovers the Insulindian phasmid. No, no, that's too much. This would really help with some of the uh, problems we've been having. Absolutely, this is great. This does not say vigilante murderers to me at all. This is science, news, human interest. You know, it's a really good thing you have that photo. Without it, you're doing good here. Perhaps only for a moment, but still. Quit while you're ahead, or no. What was that? It sounded like you set up a nightclub in the church. That's great. Anthroponeut is a great new career for you. After police officer, I don't care. Go live in the pale. Four kids were living in a tent on the ice. They were going to drown when it melted. It's not optimal, but the building was abandoned, so he put them in there. It's okay. It's not that okay. Get off this subject now. Lilianovich. A revolutionary matronym. The custom started in Grad, where they have patronyms. Krasovich, Larsovich, etc. The revolutionaries saw this as a chauvinist activism, so they used matronyms, derived from the mother's name instead. This man's mother was Lillian, his Lillian's son, Lilianovich. The custom was overturned after the revolution failed, but not before it made it to Revachol. So, it is what a soldier of the ICM would be called. Thank you, Trant. Thank you for that piece of cultural theory. You said you have a motive? Of course, excuse me, I just thought it was noteworthy. He wasn't quite sure about the straggler before he heard this detail. It must have convinced him. Jealousy. I thought this Lilianovich was an old man, to have been hiding for 50 years, like 70 something. A strange psychosexual fixation, aggravated possibly by proximity to the phasmid and its chemicals. He himself gave a political reason said he had killed an enemy combatant. Also, we have ballistics from the gun, 
matching the bullet found in the dead mercenary's head, and two officers on the scene that Mr. Dross confessed to. It's a clean win. Oh, it's way more than that. Way, way more. Win who back? You don't even know her name. That's not how personal relationships work, Harry. You found a straggler, the first since the 30s, kudos. But that doesn't change anything. It doesn't hide the smell of booze on the wind either. God damn it, it is bad. Even you can smell it. Chin up. Keep focusing on the positives here. This is a conversation for when we are no longer out in the open, in Martinez, where Everhart and Edgar Claire have ears everywhere. And eyes, too. Your return from the island must not have gone unnoticed. Understood, of course. But a case against Everard would be big. I would prefer not to partake in anything Union-related, for political neutrality. This has to be good stuff for him to backpedal out of it at first mention. How? It seems to be ongoing. I see red banners on the gates. He didn't quite solve it. He cross-pollinated information between the company rep and Everhart, until the rep came to see that the Union desires war, at which point Mrs. Messier decided to... What? Hand clear the terminal? Cool. To me, it sounds like you got played by Everhart Claire. And it's true. You are his little peony. Is that why you want us to investigate the assassination of the previous Union head thing? To get off Everard's hook? No, it's nothing like that. He was reckless with information, but ethical. We don't owe anyone anything. This allowed us to stabilize things in Martinez. God, calm down, Jean. Silence. Good. The man doesn't know what to say. Yes, yes. Fallen through a gap in a boardwalk. Drunk. The body was transported to Precinct 41, our morgue. I had Tilbrook and Mullins take care of funeral arrangements and uh, family stuff. You're not the only cop in the world, Harry. This all comes back to us. Still, good work with the missing person, Detective. It's still a point for you. No denying it. I don't know what a doomed commercial area is. Why? That's not what you were supposed to do here. There was a possible witness in there, and it was close to the crime scene. He was just chasing a lead and ended up advising a local shopkeeper. It was okay. Of course. Call it community outreach, right? Dodge the bullet there. For a moment it seemed like you were just wasting time. Who's Kuno? You don't want to know. You're right, Lieutenant. I don't. You snorted the drugs, I know you did. It's all right, I'm in. At this point, anything is but the drink. I don't want to, but you discovered a new species and solved the murder. So I have to, Jude. Honestly, anything that ends this trial is okay with me. But he's been drinking, she thinks. This is exactly how he gets out of this every time. It's bad for him, but... Agreed. The public relations potential of this is too valuable to let go. Okay. We have vehicles in the square, and the perpetrator needs to be taken into custody. Let's go. Now. Now you will finally get to know who you are. The man looks westward, impatiently, jingling his car keys in his pocket. Who are you? You're a gym teacher, Harry. Well... Obviously, you're not a gym teacher anymore, but... Before you were a cop, you were a gym teacher in Coron. It's getting really cold outside. Should we maybe... No. A regular one. You haven't told us about that. You just told us about being a gym teacher. Harry, it explains everything. The running around, the jumping, the bicep girth, your inexplicable facial hair. The fact that you don't seem to know what homosexuality is, and how you're able to perform a 360-degree spin kick too. The incredible stamina outputs. Also, this guy. Just everything about this guy. And this guy too. God, 
Even this javelin throwing freak here. Of course. Contact Mike. He's been on about Mike again. I hate that guy. Oh, you don't say. Does he also vault an impassable girl for finance and privilege? It is... it is getting cold out. In your twenties or late twenties, you've really let yourself go since then. Yes, you told Jim in cool. I believe that's the term. Told Jim at a high school. You were a high school gym teacher. The smell of sweat and glue. The worn floorboards. Kuro is just east of Jamrock. It was a short walk every morning to the baseball field or the sports building. High school. Harry, your goings on with Kuno, Andre, Asel, the whole thing on the ice. That's why you are so juvie. His smirk suggests barely contained laughter. The regular. You found some chick. She inspired you to fight the big fight. Be more than you are. All that. You. Every morning, walking from Voyager Road to teach Jim. She, leaving for the academy with her spring coat on. The air filled with the smell of smoke and raspberries and incredible hope. An ocean full of hope. I knew it. I knew no normal human being can run like that. He's an honest to God gym teacher. It's not a mystery. Some chick fucked you over. Also, you were drunk. You really went with it too. Really maximized the damage. Dora something. Dora England. Yeah, you mentioned her name. Not Dora Dubois. Something like that. Half Vasa. Vasa is where beautifully and impossibly blonde people come from. No one is married anymore. This is Rebachol. God, I don't know. Six years ago, she was way before my time. Six years and you haven't gotten over it? What the hell is wrong with you? Yeah, or seven. You're not doing too good there. It's an old man thing. Two old years equals one normal year. That and Dora Ingelon really tore you a new one. A big one. Incredibly bangable. She was extremely fuckable, Harry. Gorgeous. A gorgeous bourgeois woman. Wayfish. Like a Welkin, basically. Snow Welkin. Blonde Welkin. Heartbreak Welkin. Pain Welkin. I've only seen a picture, but it's obvious you formed a real spiritual connection with how pretty she was. One you never recuperated from. Look, the sun is going down. It's time to go on. I think she taught in the Academy des Arts, east of the river. Way east. Hard to say which came first, the middle class chick or the drink. Egg and the chicken kind of thing. My point is, you need to see a psychiatrist about this shit. Not a psychologist. Several degrees harder. Is there something harder than a psychiatrist? A forensic psychiatrist? Go talk to that. In other words, he's heard enough about this. No. You're too unstable to work for a mob boss. You're suicidal, Harry. No mob boss would take you. I assure you, I wouldn't consult for a corrupt unit. He would immediately backpedal out of it. I told you it's not that bad. Us? We're the bloody murder station, haven't you heard? With the bad guys, no one likes us. That's not true. Jamrock is too big for one precinct. You're just understaffed. And everyone respects the 41st. You have Captain Price. Thank you, Lieutenant. You're being kind. It is an understaffed station and the district is too big. Which is why we need to... Get back to it. We left Torsen and McLean to run the Sea Wing. It's not good. Mac the Torso Torsen and Chester McLean. They're not fit to run a wing. Believe me. Things are shaky as it is. They are damn iconic though. Torsen and McLean. Yeah. Not like us. Two clinically depressed old men. Where's the contrast here? We are garbage. God. There are four wings, Harry. A, B, C, and D. We're in C. It's made of losers and clock punchers. You and I reconceptualized it as a task force. It was a mistake. There's also a lot of outside help involved. Not only me. Other losers too. He's anything but a loser. 
Although he would like to be seen as one, it's cooler that way. Ptolemy Price is the son of the old Price, one of the founders of the RCM. He's one of the most highly regarded men in the force. You're lucky. Somewhere under the curved roof of a former silk factory, shaped like a ladybird with two chimneys, police captain Ptolemy Price sits behind a heavy wooden desk. Resident medic Nix Gottlieb pours him coffee. It's silent in the captain's office. They speak of change, the city, the tension on the streets. They speak of the events of April and the blood on the streets in May. So he remembers that. Yes, there may have been a raid on some churches. It wasn't good press. Shooting up churches never is. I was out of town, to be clear. Our enemies were hiding in a church, to the best of our information. That's it. I'm not talking about this anymore. Your security clearance is shit tier right now. You have to wait for it to go up. He means it. The RCM and its enemies will not be discussed on this coast. Your clearance will not go up while you're within earshot of the Union headquarters. Okay, it's not the bloody murder station. It's an old converted silk mill with green desk lamps and a coffee corner. A lot of good people work there, hard, every day. Jamrock is the largest ghetto in Rivershall. Forbok, technically, but uh, it's divided into 11 districts. Jamrock only as us. The press will blow over. Jamrock is lucky to have you. And it's often considered to be the greatest of the districts. You're lucky to have it. Thank you again, Lieutenant. Who is Lena? She lives at 1113 Tabernacle Road in Jamrock, remember? Tabernacle? It's on the way over. Near where you live on Perdition. Fine if we're gonna drop you off anyway. She and her husband were conducting the search for the Phasmid. It's their discovery, in part. They should know as soon as possible. It would do you good to deliver some positive news for a change. She is going to be over the moon. Watch out or she'll faint. Well, first I will go back to my station and write the most detailed report anyone has ever seen. It will have to be good to cover all this. Then I will have a serious talk with my captain. Detective, we just stopped a small-scale war. Something is happening to Revachol. I don't know what yet, but it's going to be a hard spring for the RCM. We need to get ready, infiltrate, investigate. Distant traffic. A scrap of newspaper drifts by, carried by the wind. It says, Tensions rise in Terminal YC in light of the Debardeur's strike in Terminal B, among representatives of every industry in Coal City. You read. Talk to Captain Price? I'd rather not ruffle the feathers of two captains with my doom mongering. Work with Price? I'm flattered, but I don't know if I. would fit him. and crazy enough. can take the stress. He doesn't know how to finish the sentence. This truly came as a surprise to him. Not a bad one, but he's at a loss. Flattered? Juliet no Kitsuragi. We would be flattered if you even considered. I would have to tie things up in GRIH first. But, I mean, whatever is coming, Jamrock will be more central to it than the harbour. And we also have a huge caseload, Lutno. Piles that we need to get back to. Mountains, even. I do like the sound of that. He's really considering it. Good. Fuck it, let's go. Tron brought his motor carriage. It's a 20-minute drive to Jamrock. Under the evening sky, the great district turns on its lights. A chessboard of wooden houses, 80,000 living souls inside. Fire traps as far as the eye can see from Main Street to Precinct 41 atop the motorway, to Boogie Street forking into the dark horizon. You close your eyes and hear the dogs bark. A lone woman sits by a factory window, dreaming of meteorite strikes. On Rue de saint Jerome, a square bullet slides into a square-shaped chamber. In Old South, 
a man without eyelids smiles. Spring has come. It's time. Dawson? Yes. McLean? Yes. Hyrulstan? No. Vitmere? Yes. Dubois? Of course. Really? Nick Scott Lee looks up from the list. I hear he's unstable. You say that like it's a bad thing. Captain Ptolemy Price gestures with a ballpoint pen. It's dim in his office and the curtains are drawn. Harry's our man. He'll pull through. When he does, he'll side with the people. Understood. Gottlieb returns to the list. Minnow? Of course. Wonderful. Then can we please just go back to Jamrock now? Thank you.